Welcome, I'm the Kaji no Kami, and it is time I review the 1957 Toho film, The Mysterians. The Mysterians, or as it was known in Japan, Earth Defense Force, was the first kaiju film to ever be filmed using Toho's own anamorphic lens that allowed the movie to be shot in a widescreen format to match other films coming out at the time. This new technology allowed moviegoers to experience a picture that was twice as long as they were used to, bringing about a whole new perception to film. This process became known as Toho Scope, and it would be used until the late 60s when it was replaced with a more generic lens. In addition, because of this, the film used a wide variety of Colors, from the standard day scenes to night scenes, and even gave our titular aliens costumes and various colors to make use of its nature. Its success would inspire Toho to make more science fiction films in the kaiju genre, such as Battle for Outer Space, Invasion of Astro Monster, and the eventual War in Space, despite being inspired by Star Wars. In one of the last interviews he conducted before he died, Ishiro Honda went on to say that The Mysterians was hands down his favorite film he had ever directed. That gives this movie a lot of hype. So let's see if it actually lives up to the hype and is as good as a film as Honda believed. The Mysterians begin with a festival where we are introduced to our main characters Joji Atsumi, his friend and colleague Roichi Shirashi, Roichi's sister and Atsumi's fiance Etsuko, and Roichi's former fiance Hiroka Iwamoto. These four are portrayed by our favorite actors who have shown up in previous films like Godzilla and Rodan. They are Kenji Sahara, Akahito Hirata, Yumi Shirakawa, and Momoko Kochi. A forest fire breaks out abruptly ending the celebration as everyone observes the devastation it causes. Oops, too bad you don't have any Dragon Balls to wish the forest back. Why have you summoned me at this time? Please restore the forest and make it as beautiful as it was before! <laughs> The next day, Atsumi goes to visit Godzilla expert Dr. Yamane Sorry, I mean Dr. Tanjiro Adachi, as Takashi Shimura just happens to be playing him. They discussed some reports Ryochi had made of- <laughs> I think they're also the distant cousins to the Metroids. A call comes in saying that the village Ryochi was staying at was buried by a landslide, so Atsumi heads out to investigate the site. <laughs> The officers at the site find themselves vexed as the land appears to have been tampered with and all the radiation that was previously recorded is gone. Ah, damn. We're not allowed to enter. Let's turn around and go home. That's a lot of fish. From there, they come across an area where the mountain is smoking. Whoa! We're barely 15 minutes in the movie and we already have a monster attacking? Yeah! This is gonna be the best movie ever! Hell yeah! Someone help me! I I'm still alive, only I'm very badly burned. Can someone call an ambulance? I'm in quite a lot of pain. Hello, up there. I seem to have fallen down a cliff. I'm still alive, but I'm very badly injured. Please? No one? The mechanical mole, known to us as Mogura, rampages through the land while people are evacuated from their homes and the military takes action. A flamethrower. Yes, a flamethrower. You're bringing a flamethrower to fight a giant monster. 
Oh, this is gonna go over so well. Astonishingly, the military does defeat the raging robot. Later, Dr. Adachi discovers spaceships are traveling between the moon and the earth via an orbiting space station. He reports his findings, which causes an investigation over a lake which he believed was the base area for these so-called Mysterians from Mysteroid. It turns out to be true as a strange dome unearths itself and the aliens inside request the attendance of Dr. Adaichi, Atsumi, and three others. Welcome. The Kerizian party is down the hall and to the left. There they meet with the Red Ranger? Natko Red tells them their life story and then requests And by requests I mean orders That they be given two miles of land and women to marry But they have already taken the land they wanted and already kidnapped most of the women they wanted So I'm not exactly sure why they are asking them They've already technically trumped them Oh, and this is the best part <laughs> Oh wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> Nevertheless, Adachi and Gang report their meeting to the government, who scoffs at the request made since they have already did that without permission. Well, duh. Additionally, it is soon discovered that Royochi is working with the Mysterians. There is nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling transmission. The military unsuccessfully attacks the dome after it is discovered the aliens have a weakness towards heat. Why would you go to Japan then if you can't stand heat? Why not go to Antarctica? That'd be like being completely vulnerable to water and coming to Earth, a planet that is 70% water. Anyway, the Mysterians respond to the attack. <laughs> I don't think you understand how bartering works. It's time for another good idea, bad idea. Good idea. So these are kind of cool. How much are they? One for ten. One for ten. You can choose which one you'd like. Okay. Here you go. Thank you. Bye. Bad idea. Hey, these are kind of cool. How much for them? One for ten. One for ten. Uh-huh. But there's five, so I want wow. all five. I'll give you ten for all five. And no, for all five it would be twenty. Nah, I'll just take five for the ten. <laughs> no, that's sweet. Give no, you know what, then, they're in my hand, so they're mine anyway. No. I'm keeping my ten. Dick! The end. Stress levels rise and one of the officials demands that they use H-bombs to take on the aliens, while an American scientist reveals that they have created a new ray device that will reflect the Mysterian's attack. At the same time, Hiroko and Etsuko are kidnapped. Of course! And the award for best acting goes to... Log. Atsumi sneaks into the Mysterian's base via a cave he had discovered earlier to rescue them. He destroys their control center while the military's new satellite ray gun thing attacks the dome.
Unfortunately, he is taken captive only to discover that his captor is Ryochi, who helps him and the women escape before the base explodes. Oh yeah, and during this time, Mogura returns. <laughs> Ryoichi finishes Atsumi's work with the control room and the remaining Mysterians flee. This is followed by a new Earth satellite being launched to protect the planet. Thus ending the Mysterian threat of Earth. At least for now. Is it for now? I don't know. I know Battle in Outer Space is meant to be a sequel, but I don't know if the Mysterians return in that one. Huh. Guess I'll have to watch and review that one. In the end, I really enjoyed The Mysterians. It is by no means a perfect film, as there is very little in the way of character development, but the plot moves at a brisk pace and the set pieces provide a fun and engaging film. Hiroko and Esko are pretty much only there to be damsels in distress, which is a shame as it shuns their acting talents. What I mean by that is that these characters serve no purpose whatsoever other than to be the reason Atsumi goes into the Mysterian base. Hell, the movie seems to forget they even exist for two thirds of its runtime, which also highlights how useless they are. I'm really sure there could have been another reason to send Atsumi into the base. Maybe he went in there to try and put sense into Ryuichi's head? Something? Anything? Speaking of which, Roichi is a major letdown as he appears in even less time than the women do. I'm not even sure why they had cast Harata to play a character that was so minute. I guess it was because he is an expert at sacrificing himself, since that is the only reason Roichi even exists. Shimura returns with his normal charms as it is always delightful to see him on screen. Although I feel like Toho has typecast him as a scientist in these films. It would be nice to see him do something more and show off his talents as he was able to do in Seven Samurai. As for Atsumi, he is fine. He cares about his friends and family, he goes to save the girls by himself because no one else will, showing his heroic nature. I do wish more had been done to develop him. Still, he does get an arc throughout the film, solidifying him as the central character. One of the film's strong points is how it removes Japan from its bubble. There is a scene where Adachi begs America and Russia to move past their petty squabbles and realize that the Mysterians are as much of a threat to them as they are to Japan. America responds by sending a few of their scientists over to Japan to help out with the situation. I found this to be an astute idea, one of which I believe does not happen again in these type of films until the 1984 Godzilla movie. It makes the movie feel much more grandiose when the entire world is put into peril over just one country. After all, would you feel more threatened if in Power Rangers Lord Zed tried to take over the entire world or just Angel Grove? The Mysterians are okay for villains, they don't really do much and we are never really shown any personality from them. It is more that they stand out due to their ridiculous suits over anything else. Thankfully, they have provided a true threat to the Earth as opposed to other alien beings that will often be there because the movie needs someone for the heroes to fight. I also love the concept behind Mogura. I always thought of him as a robot penguin, but he is meant to be a mole, which makes sense. Not sure why I had never realized this before. I wish they had done more with him though because he shows up in the first quarter, is defeated and left for God until he just randomly shows up at the end, only to be defeated by something falling on his head. Terrifying. He had a lot of potential that was never applied. However, from my understanding, he was a last minute addition as producer Tomoyuki Tanaka had decided in the middle of filming that he wanted a monster to be present. So the underutilization is logical. I'm sure something more efficient could have been done about the creature's final scene though, as it makes him look a tad pathetic being beaten by accident. Still, it could have been worse. He could have been defeated like this. Where? As usual, Eiji Tsuburaya and Akira Fukube have done an outstanding job. The effects work is quite impressive, especially for the miniatures during Mogura's attack early on. I love some of the shots done, especially this one.
The same goes for the score of Fukube provided. In fact, several themes found here make an appearance in later movies, even through the Heisei Godzilla series. have its ups and downs, Ishiro Hana has provided us with a solid film that has aged quite well. It has enough action to please the average viewer, while also having a lot of symbolic undertones to please the sophisticated film goer. While it may not be my personal favorite Ishiro Honda film, I can definitely understand why he would feel that way, as there is a lot to be found here that you will not catch on the first viewing. Maybe not even the second viewing. And that is an additional viewing I am looking forward to doing. Until next time. Bye.